Welcome back everyone. In this video I show you how I Wi-Fi enabled our Honda generator. All right, it's me, Jason, from this morning. And let's quickly go over the goals and what we need to do here. This is our Honda 1000 uh, watt generator. Uh, we got it from one of our subscribers, actually, in Guatemala City. Uh, and it got into Guatemala by way of a sailboat, because uh, they're not normally for sale here in Guatemala. But uh, here it is. Now, this is a little bit older model. Uh, and the way... Uh, the on off switch works is there's a knob here that when you switch it off it cuts the the power to the coil shorts out the positive of the input of the coil and uh, also cuts the uh, fuel valve so there's a valve uh, for the liquid fuel the gasoline going to the carburetor and so it cuts that off uh, as well now a common modification on generators of this era is to intercept the on off switch to the coil and relocate it usually up here uh, and what that allows you to do is come here and turn off the the switch the original switch and that just cuts the fuel and the generator continues to run for another two minutes until it's exhausted and consumed all the fuel in the carburetor and that prevents fuel gumming up from old fuel sitting in the carb some people agree some disagree uh, some of the newer models of this generator have a uh, three position switch uh, original factory switch where you can uh, turn it off, turn off just the fuel, or turn off the fuel and the spark, all on the same one. But this one's a little bit older, and it doesn't have that feature. So, obviously, what I, we need to control, or be able to control, is the switch. So this uh, on-off switch I want to be able to control. And secondly, these generators have an eco mode uh, switch here, which just throttles down the generator until uh, to, to the minimum, whatever the minimum it needs to run. And then when you put a big load on it, like a cooktop or laptop or whatever, and it needs more power, needs more throttle, it has a little throttle motor in there and it'll turn up the throttle proportionally to the, to the loads that it's seeing. And uh, that's handy. Most of the time we have it off, but uh, I'd like to be able to use that switch as well. So as many of you know, we're traveling through Central America right now, and I have what limited resources we have along with us to utilize to make this mod happen. So I've raided my electronics doodad drawer here, and I've got uh, quite a few actually, eight or ten. Wemos D1 Minis, these are a ESP8266 uh, prototyping dev board, and the thing I really like about this Wemos platform is that uh, they all use these standard uh, pin headers and you can stack as many complementary parts as you need onto them. So for example this is a battery charger and 5 volt step up converter that you can connect a lithium battery to and let's say I want to stack a RGB LED shield onto a controller and then stack that into the battery. Boom. Or let's say I need some relays. Here are some relay shields, and I can just take the board, uh, has my program on it, stack it on there. If I need another relay, stack it on there, and uh, stack up as many things as you need. What else do I have in here? Okay, I've got a motor control shield, two uh, H bridges for two small motors. Uh, passive infrared motion detector sensors, all sorts of good stuff you can get. And it's all relatively inexpensive. Everything is less than $10. Alrighty, so to put this all together, I'm going to need two relay modules, uh, one for the eco mode switch and one for the kill switch. So I'll stack two of those up. And then one Wemos D1 Mini microcontroller. And then to power it just temporarily here, I'm going to run it off of USB off the laptop drive uh, port here. Now, as you can see on the uh, app, the unit has come online here, and the eco mode switch gets triggered on by default. I'll explain that why that happens in a moment, and the kill switch is running. And if you can see, hopefully, 
the two little blue LEDs here. Uh, this is the eco mode switch. And uh, the run kill switch. So when I hit that, it uh, closes the relay and that will kill the generator. So I can already hear all the keyboard commandos leave in their comment that if you're running a generator, chances are you don't have power. If you don't have power, you don't have Wi Fi. And if you don't have Wi Fi, what good is this? Uh, you're right. Technically, we're at a little bit of an advantage as our truck has. Uh, effectively a power wall rolling around with us and our Wi-Fi is always on with us and the Blink server is running on a, a Pi cluster here. Um, but there's a very easy alternative uh, so I will also post on the website uh, this uh, Wi-Fi version that uses an access point. So I've just programmed that to the uh, to this little prototype here now. So as you can see I'm connected to the Honda EU1000i access point. It's just creating its own little Wi-Fi hotspot here uh, with no internet of course. It's just uh, an orphaned island of internet. But uh, you connect to that with your smartphone and then go to the IP address 192.168.4.1 and you're presented with this lovely bit of coolness. And uh, it's much simpler of course, but as you can see in here hopefully That's another way you can do it uh, if you just want to be able to take this with you camping and you don't have a Wi-Fi hotspot, you've chained your generator to the tree over yonder and you just want to kill it from here without walking over there, you can do that very easily as well. All right, so that's the hardware and circuitry sort of uh, rough together, sort of figured out, sort of working. Uh, next step is to see what we're up against in here. And where better to tear this thing apart than at the kitchen table. Two screws on either side here that uh, hold in this panel. Now obviously I've been in here before, just uh, checking what I was up against before taking this on. All right, so behind the cover, these two more screws hold the, the panel up in there. Nothing too intimidating. There's a plastic hood that covers the 110 volt outlet. This is the module here for the online output indicator, overload alarm, and oil alert LEDs. In this corner is the proprietary connection for Honda's 12 volt output, as well as their breaker. And the thing I'm most interested in inside here is this switch for the eco mode. It's red with a yellow tracer and red with a white tracer. So those are the two wires we need from right here. Okay, and now I'll turn my attention to the on-off switch, or the kill switch. As I mentioned, the previous owner relocated it up here to this uh, toggle. Uh, he's already kind of done some of the hard work for me. Uh, but originally, down in here is a little switch. In fact, you can see it right in this corner. It's a little white. Uh, arm comes out and hits this black plastic module right here, right behind this uh, plastic boss. But uh, I can see those wires are cut off, and he's got these two running up here to this switch. Alright, there's one little catch with this whole plan. Uh, obviously I've done some testing before I even started filming this video. Uh, with this exact unit, and uh, when I actuate the relay to close the two wires for the kill switch, it closes the wires, and then as the engine begins to die, it throttles down and it's about to die, then the power coming out to power the relay lowers, and then the relay opens up, and then it starts back up again. So it's not, it doesn't hold the relay closed quite long enough to kill the uh, generator. So the way around that is just to use the normally closed contacts on the relay and uh, start the generator, power up the module, and then activate or enable a, uh, a second switch in line with the relay so that uh, you can start it up, 
flip the switch to arm the uh, the kill switch and then when you release the contact it will reclose go back to the normally closed position and and that will kill everything so to, to do that I'm going to replace this metal dingus uh, switch with just two positions with this uh, three position on off on switch and what that's going to do is one of them one of the positions will just be the regular kill just as it originally was or as this one was and uh, zero in the middle will be run and two the other closed position will be in series with the normally closed relay and that will uh, enable the remote kill. I've rated my drawer of assorted lengths of wire here, just some odds and ends. I'm going to go through this and then wire up this switch and uh, halfway install this into the generator and then I'll bring you back to show you how I did it. All right, next I need to open up this hole for this switch with a larger body. Always good to do these sorts of things when your wife isn't around. Got the wires pulled through and to solder this I'm using my trusty 3D printed 18650 battery bank to power my TS100 amazing soldering iron. If you guys don't know about these Go check it out. Start off by just tinning the wires. And shrink tubies for those too. Alrighty, got the shrink tube shrunk. That's all ready to go in there. Not gonna push it in completely quite yet. Alrighty, got the relays cleaned up of all the junk we don't need. As you can see, they're a little leaner now. Now that at least they're small enough, I can jam them in little nooks and crannies inside the Jenny. Okay, here it is all leaned out. And uh, of course, quick test to make sure it's still working. And it does. Uh, what I've done here isn't so confusing as it may first appear. Um, you just need to remember these are wired exactly as they would be stacked. So if you just think that they would be stacked like this, I've basically wired them. One to one, two to two, three to three, five volts to five volts, ground to ground. So there's nothing mysterious about what I've done here. Uh, next, we need to fit this inside the generator. All right, so I'm just going to wire this up quick, take it outside and give it a test. Uh, these are the two wires from the uh, switch up at the top. They will be wired to the normally co closed contacts on the kill switch. And then these spade terminals that went to the eco mode switch trim those off. You'll see why in a minute. Uh, and just, uh, strip those wires back. And those will be wired to the normally open contact on the eco mode relay. And then we'll go outside and give it a test. All right, so I'll give you a quick demo here. Uh, I've just uh, connected this panel in here loosely, or rather not connected, but it's just sitting there. And then the two relay modules are just dangling here and the uh, Wemos board as well. And just for testing temporarily, I'm just going to get the power from a uh, five volt USB wall wart. Uh, you probably won't be able to hear me, but I will throw up a demo of uh, the app that I've whipped up on screen here for you to watch. You can follow along. So here it is.
so <laughs> it stumbled there. I'm actually nearly completely out of fuel here, as you can see. So uh, good that I was able to get a little bit of testing done. It seems to be working really great. Uh, I'm going to now take this back inside and button things up a little more. Uh, I don't want mine running off of the uh, USB to 110 volt wall plug. So the next changes I'm going to do are a uh, 5 volt power supply that's powered directly off of the uh, 12 volt circuit. Okay, back inside now. And this module here is the back side of the uh, 12 volt output with their proprietary connection and the breaker. And I'm just going to tie into the two wires that feed that. All right, guys, ran into a little bit of a disaster. As you probably saw, a montage of me putting this 5 volt power supply powered directly off the 12 volt uh, module here. Unfortunately, the testing I did with this, uh, I only had one of the relays connected and it worked fine, but it's just not quite got enough jam to power both relays and there will be situations that I need both. So it looks like this little one isn't going to work. Unfortunately, it's rated at 500 milliamps and as you can see in this clip, uh, it's surging slightly over 500 once in a while and then the voltage drops and the whole thing resets. Uh, which is sad. I wish I could have used that and tuck it in there somewhere. Uh, I do have a bigger uh, power supply. This one will do 10 amps. This is my spare for the uh, for our Raspberry Pi clusters. Okay, of course I could just power this simply by uh, plugging in the USB and running the wire somehow outside and then plugging it in the front of the generator. But that's for chumps and it won't fit inside my side compartment door this way. And so I'm going to put it inside. I've cut the terminals off of the, uh, the wall adapter and then I'm going to solder some leads onto there. And I've got some really heavy shrink tubing to insulate it really well. Okay, then on the back of the outlet here, there's these push to connect holes common on household wall outlets like this and those just jam in there like that. All right guys there it is kind of put together. I used some uh, 3M VHB two-sided tape to kind of hold everything in place here. Uh, I'm not at all thrilled with the way this turned out unfortunately. Um, so it's going to be left kind of in this incomplete state for now but uh, I'll give you the quick tour. Uh, this is the 5 volt USB adapter. Just your typical 5 volt and I found a nice short cable. It's only about four inches long uh, to go up to the Wemos itself here and it is powered from the wired connectors into the back of the outlet and then I've just two-sided taped this kill switch relay here and this relay for the uh, eco mode is here. Now this is obviously a rat's nest and I know you can't see what's going on here very well. All right, so let's jump into the computer and I'll show you how it uh, is all wired up in the end. Uh, as you can see, the Wemos D1 Mini uh, 1 and 2 of the, the Wemos uh, relay modules. Now, as I said, these are very simply wired together. Uh, you simply connect the 5 volt uh, to each of them to provide five volts of power and then uh, ground between each of them and that's uh, the easy part kind of done and now the relays should have power and then you need to connect D1 to eco mode and D2 is connected to the kill switch so with these uh, few wires connected, you should be able to plug in USB power and uh, control either of those relays using either the Arduino code or the uh, web server code, both of which are on the website. And then here are the two switches for uh, the generator. Of course, the original kill switch, which was down by the fuel selector valve, and the eco mode switch, 
both of which were originally single pole, single throw switches. Uh, to be able to remotely, uh, or to have a switch that enables shutdown manually at the generator and shutting down uh, remotely, we need to replace this kill switch with a single pole double throw in a on off on configuration, meaning it has three positions. One position connects two of the terminals together, in the middle connects nothing, and in the third it connects these two together. So I've got that uh, illustrated here. Connect that to that, and that to that. All right, and then connecting the relays uh, is next. Simple enough for the eco mode switch. It's basically just run in parallel with the switch in the front panel, and that's easy enough. When you close the relay, it simulates the switch being closed on the front panel. The kill switch is slightly more complicated to think about, but not so bad. Uh, we're going to use the normally closed contact on the relay. Again, this is because the relay, uh, if you close the contact to kill the engine, uh, the, it would spin down and as it's about to die it would lose power and then start up again. So we need to close the relay and hold it closed and then when we want to, to kill it, let it go. And so to do that, we wire to the normally closed contacts on the relay and uh, it's wired to the switch like this. Uh, hopefully you can follow along, if not, just do that and it should work just fine for you. One other thing I should mention, I've, I forgot to show when I had it all apart, is these relays have a little uh, selector on the back. Uh, it's a, an array of solder pads, and by default, the relays will actuate on pin D1. Uh, but if you want two different relays, you need to scratch that little trace between the center pad and D1, and then put a solder blob between uh, D1. 2 in this case. I've used D2 for the kill switch, so I've bridged that little contact between the D2 and the center of that little selector. And lastly, of course, is powering this whole setup. Uh, as you saw in the end, uh, I needed to use a wall wart, and I just wired that to 110 volts, and then uh, have that plugged into the USB input on the Wemos. Uh, it's not ideal. I would have liked to have a DC to DC converter in there, uh, stepping down the voltage to the 5 volts that this setup runs, but I just don't have the components with me to do that, so it's going to stay in a little bit of an uh, incomplete state at the moment. Alright, and then of course code. I didn't spend any time on this in this video, because I know viewer attention falls off uh, pretty quickly when I do that, but Here's the code for the generator uh, web server version. Uh, again, this creates a Wi-Fi hotspot that you can connect to when you're out camping. You don't need any Wi-Fi in your truck or, uh, or if you were at home, for example. Chances are if you're running the generator, you don't have power, uh, so you wouldn't have Wi-Fi there either. Uh, so this will create a Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, as you can see, uh, the password here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and uh, you can change this to whatever you want in case you're worried about somebody hacking your generator and it's uh, really short 80 lines of code including the 10 lines of uh, comments there at the top so uh, that is that and here's the version i'm going to be using this is the the blink uh, generator controls uh, file that also will be on the website and uh, it's incomplete at the moment. As you can tell, I'm uh, just using RPM and temperature. I have placeholders in there. Uh, I want to install a DS1820 and maybe somehow figure out uh, the RPM either by the windings, if I can pick up on the windings on the DC coil uh, and, and see those spikes and uh, figure out the RPM from that, or some other hour meter uh, units I've seen use uh, a wire wrapped around the spark plug wire. It's not connected, it's just using induction off the spark plug. Uh, so that might be a fun way of trying it. That's incomplete at the moment, but I'll post what I have for now. It does work, and it does use the uh, hour meter, which is nice, which I haven't really mentioned much yet, but 
maybe let's go outside and give you one last demo and show everything working. Alrighty, so I normally forget to thank our supporting channel members till the very end, so this time let's not forget these guys. It's their support that lets me make videos like this. If you're interested in these sorts of projects, consider hitting the join button down below. Um, and so without any further ado, uh, I'll throw a copy of a screen recording up on the screen on the uh, side there for you. And uh, I assume you won't be able to hear anything I'm saying. Uh, but as you can see here in the top, uh, this little one, that indicates that the generator is offline, or the Wemos is not connected to the server, and so these buttons will do any, won't do anything right now. But you can see here in the bottom right, the on-off of eco mode, and the on-off of the generator relay. Uh, additionally, you'll notice I do have oil hours and total engine hours recorded as well as tank runtime, which is uh, basically a counter of how long it's run on that session. So I can fill it up with fuel right to the brim, start it up, and uh, see that it ran for 6.9 hours on that uh, particular run that time. So that's what that is. The oil hours is the number of oil uh, hours on that oil change, which is a handy feature to have and as well as the engine hours, which I'm approximating because the fellow who sold it to me said he put through a half a dozen tanks of fuel at most, so I'm guessing that's the number of hours on it. Uh, but here I'll fire it up and show you what's what. So the switch on the top, if I switch it to the first position, will kill it. And if I switch it to the second position, that will enable the uh, remote kill switch. Here you can see it's just come online because the uh, up here at the top, the uh, number one has gone missing. If I click on that, you can see that it's online since 1201. And of course, eco mode does as you would expect. And the kill switch does as, as you'd expect. Uh, as I mentioned inside, uh, uh, looking at the code, the engine RPM and engine temperature are uh, placeholders at the moment, not completely implemented. Uh, I'm going to probably install an 18, uh, DS1820 temperature sensor and maybe fiddle around with uh, RPM, although uh, I'm happy enough with the way it's running for now. I might just uh, seal up those components, either with some conformal coating, if I can find it, or some clear coat, just to seal that up. Oh, and maybe spackle it with some silicone, we'll see. But anyway, that's it up and running. Uh, if you're interested in uh, a little more information, there will be a blog post on the website, everlanders.com, uh, with the code and the diagram, a graphical diagram of what I showed you earlier. So that's going to be it for this time. Thanks again to our supporting channel members. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. The names you see here now are our supporting channel members whose uh, monthly contributions keep the lights on around here. Yeah, we're homeless. The light comes from the sun.